All right, guys, so today we've got the Time USB 100 amp hour 12 volt sturdy version. A lot of you guys have been asking about this battery, so Time USB has sent us one over to review. Now, I'm not quite sure what the thing is about this battery. Like I said, it's 12 volt 100 amp hour sturdy edition. It says it's actually 110 amp hour capacity, 100 amp BMS. And it's coming in at around $285.99. I can definitely tell you that the box is much larger than your typical battery. And it's, it's heavy. It's very heavy. So we're going to figure out what, uh, what that's all about. Let's open it up. Uh, so their typical packet. Let's see if there's anything in the manual. Besides it being 110 amp hours, that is going to give us some kind of advantage. You can charge at 100 amps. You can discharge at 100 amps continuously. It supports uh, four in series and four in parallel. Yeah, I don't see anything special really in there. We have our M8 terminal bolts. This time it's only two. We usually get four. And wow, that is just a massive battery it's it's basically this seems like the size of a of a 200 amp hour or maybe a 24 volt battery oh. there it is here's our non-sturdy version as you can see uh, a massive size difference Uh, so let's weigh the two. So we've got 37 pounds on the sturdy and 23.6 on the standard version. Okay, so we're going to charge this guy up and we'll do a capacity test and see how much capacity this has over the standard version. And then, of course, we are going to tear this down because we've got to see what's inside here. All right, so the charge completed. I wanna start the charge again to see what it charges up to. Right now we're setting at 13.35. So let's start it back up. Okay, we've hit 14. 14.35. Okay, it looked like we hit around 14.5, and that's when it stopped charging. So that's pretty good. Uh, we want to see it at least hit 14.2. That's usually the minimum that we want to see it charge up to. And so now we're going to hook this up to the shunt so we can do a discharge test. All right, so we got the shunt hooked up. I'm recording a time lapse over here so we can see the full process. I've got the alpha inverter connected with a heater as the load. So let's turn the inverter on and that'll start the test. And we are pulling uh, 50, around 55 amps, 721 watts. So we'll let this continue and when it completes, I'll be back. All right, guys, so we're down to 1%. Now, I set this to 100 amp hours, but supposedly this battery is going to go to 110, even though it says 100 amp hours on it. And uh, so we have reached 100 amp hours, 1,289 watt hours. So we've reached the full capacity stated on the label. And uh, we're just going to continue to let it go and see how far it takes us. All right, so uh, 
we are about to hit 110 amp hours. There it is, 110 amp hours. Uh, 1,406 watt hours so far, and we're still going. It looks like we're gonna go a little past 110. So far, so good. Um, but there definitely remains a mystery as to why this battery is so large and way more heavier. <laughs> but of course, as soon as this test is complete, this thing's getting opened and we will solve that mystery. We've got 112 amp hours, 1,430 watt hours, and still going. You know, one thing to note, uh, while this time lapse was going, somewhere in the middle, my tablet had some kind of message about an update and it stopped the uh, the recording here and I had to end up restarting it so I'm not sure where that happened uh, so I'll have to splice the two together I uh, just wanted you guys to know that so it uh, in case it looks like there's a jump in the middle that's the reason I'm thinking we're going to end up somewhere around 114. The voltage is starting to drop here. And the voltage on the inverter is already in the tens. So it's probably going to start uh, sounding its alarm very soon. And there it is. So we're going to shut it off. And our final capacity is 114.52 amp hours, 1,457 watt hours. All right, well, uh, it exceeds what they claim. And so now we're going to open this guy up. All right, guys. So um, it definitely lived up to its name, the sturdy name, because boy, was that tough but all time usbs they are quite tough to open it seems like they're tougher than most other batteries uh, they use this kind of white silicone caulking to hold these together and and they use enough of it to really hold it together but anyways that's enough of that uh i think i've got it open enough to where we can break open the last uh bit on camera and there it is all right, now this is very interesting so far. Um, I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cells. Here's our BMS. Uh, what does it say here? It's a Time USB branding. Uh, 100 amp is uh, all I can really tell here. I. I think this looks a lot like their regular 100 amp. This looks a lot like the one I think that was in their other 100 amp battery, uh, the one that I showed earlier. But uh, these cells, this is odd. The cells look large enough. They kind of look 100 amp hour size, but clearly they're not. Uh, they're gonna be I guess maybe 60 amp hours let's see if we can pull this whole pack out there we go okay Whew. let's see what we got here I certainly do not recognize these cells whatsoever. These look 
very much different than anything I've seen. They have a just like a white wrapper and um, it feels like a like paper like so not uh, not the shrink wrap that we're used to uh, there is some spacers in between some insulators uh, I don't know what that's made out of but that's a, a good thing that way these are not going to short out between the cells but yeah uh, no do we have QR codes no I don't see any QR codes I see a sticker that says pass I don't know huh I don't know what to think of these cells guys these are the the balance wires yeah, it just looks like some really generic cells. Um, yeah, I don't know what to make of it. Uh, they're definitely, uh, certainly much heavier and larger than really, really what they should be. All right, guys, I think that's uh, pretty much going to be the end of it. I don't see any low temperature sensors or anything. We've got a high temperature sensor that's... Uh, glued to the bottom of one of the cells but that's that's it it does have a, a nice kind of frame and banding that's holding it together the construction is pretty good uh, I just I don't I don't know about these cells yeah you guys tell me what you think in the comments but uh, I think that's going to be the end of the video if you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. That really helps out the channel a whole lot. And I'll catch you on the next one.